how I passed the ICND-1 exam and got Cisco CCENT certified. That's right, so recently I passed the exam, did a bunch of studying, took the exam, had a lot of hard questions on it, but passed, was really happy about that. So next up is the ICND-2 exam, and then I'll have the full CCNA certification. So I passed the exam on July 1st, 2019, and I wanted to share with you what training courses I used, as well as what labs I took, and how I got my hands on some physical Cisco equipment to build a lab in my own house. Now, first of all, I'm gonna recommend for training videos, what I used was the CBT Nuggets. Now, on CBT Nuggets, Jeremy Chara has a course on there for ICND-1 and ICND-2. Now, the ICND-1 section that I took has 78 videos, and it's a total of 20 hours. So, I'm going to put a link to that here, so you can go over to CBT Nuggets and uh, check out that training course. Now, they have a one-week training, and things are pretty tight for me right now. So, what I did was... Uh, when the one-week training was up, I used a new email address, registered a new account, and it took me three weeks, so three accounts of trial accounts, to get through the ICND-1 class. But it worked, and I was able to do that without any money out of pocket. Now, I plan to go purchase the ICND-2 course so that, uh, you know, I, I'm registered on CBD Nuggets, and I'm, and I'm not just stealing a service from them. But Jeremy was a really good instructor and I recommend his classes. It gave me all of the theory that I needed and that's in supplement with the labs gave me enough knowledge to pass the test. Now while I was going through the course with Jeremy first thing he pretty much suggested was to get your hands on some actual Cisco equipment so you can build a Cisco lab. Now, I recommend going out to find your local PC recyclers or electronics recyclers. Do a Google search for where your local you know, PC recyclers are and go there, try to find, get your hands on some Cisco equipment. I actually have volunteered and had worked previously at uh, a particular PC recycling center here in town and so I had torn down a bunch of Cisco equipment. I remember seeing it. So I just went back to there, talked to them. Sure enough, they had a small stack of Cisco devices. I was able to get a trunk full of Cisco equipment for very inexpensive. And what I ended up using out of that stack were two Cisco, two Cisco 3560 switches and two of the 2600 routers. And in addition to that, I had to purchase a console cable on Amazon that went from the Ethernet console port to the USB on the computer. And Jeremy suggested getting the serial cables and all this. I didn't buy any of that. Uh, the equipment I had actually had some of the serial T1 ports on the back. So I was able to do all of the serial type of labs by using that T1 connection. So that was all that I needed as far as physical Cisco equipment and I highly recommend building a lab like that and getting some used equipment because when I got the used equipment it, it had uh, passwords on it, it had old Cisco iOS images on it so I had to wipe them out right out of the gate. I had to do some troubleshooting, upgrade some of the iOS so, uh, software to the advanced security just so that I uh, had the devices up and running like Jeremy's lab was. So I had to do a lot of Googling and a lot of learning just to follow along with the videos from Jeremy and that made me learn a lot. So I'm glad I actually got some physical Cisco devices and built the lab in my house to kind of troubleshoot some of the real, you know, hands-on problems that you might have with these devices. Now in connection with that, I highly recommend the Packet Tracer Labs because the Packet Tracer Labs let you quickly get scenarios that you just won't be able to build in your home lab. Now on the Packet Tracer Labs, I recommend the Udemy course. 
and it's called Cisco CCNA Packet Tracer Ultimate Labs CCNA Exam Prep Labs. So check that one out because of all the Udemy courses I searched, that was the best one and it has 63 labs, 20 hours of video. So what you should do is follow along with the theory with Jeremy, do some of the physical labs uh, with him if you can and then look at the packet tracer labs and as you're doing the theory match up the packet tracer labs to the to the section of theory that you're doing and then go and do that packet tracer lab so for example when Jeremy starts talking about doing a uh, router on a stick and he's going through all the theory of that when you get done go over to the Udemy course and go down to the router on a stick lab and do the packet tracer lab as well so as you're working through the theory with uh, Jeremy on the CBT Nuggets make sure you go ahead and go over there and do the packet tracer lab as well to match you know each section that you're doing now just a heads up the CCNT certification is going to expire on February 24th 2020 and at that time you would you would need to be upgraded and finish the ICMD2 test so you have the full CCNA certification so if you have the CCNA certification on February 24th, 2020, uh, it's gonna, the current certification will be transitioned to an equivalent in the new program. So you'll automatically get transitioned over to uh, you know, a, a new certification on February 24th. But the CCNT that I have right now is gonna go away. I need to go ahead and finish up the uh, ICND2 exam so I get the full CCNA certification. So that's what's going to be coming up next on this channel is uh, my journey through to the ICND2 exam and get that full Cisco certification. I'll share any tips and tricks I find along the way. And after that, there's a new certification coming from Cisco, and it is the Cisco Certified DevNet Professional, which is a certification that seems to be more focused on developers. So that really appeals to me with my game development background one thing I've always been interested in is multiplayer games and you know how would you program a really good MMO for example like World of Warcraft and and you know on a network back end how would you do that how would you build the data center what Cisco uh, switches and routers would you use and what type of programming can you do on the Cisco devices that could uh, speed up the performance of your MMO game in conjunction with that um, how can we program the full down the full OSI model? All seven layers are all, you know, the top six upper layers anyways. How can we program those for a better, more efficient multiplayer experience? So traditionally as a network engineer, I really have only cared about, you know, the layer two, three, and four of the OSI model, and five, six, and seven you know the the application portion essentially is something that you just don't worry about so the Cisco uh, certified DevNet professional kind of expands to learn you know how do you program from the top seventh layer of the OSI model at the application all the way down to the point where you're at zeros and ones going down the wire so I mean really excited to learn the you know how to program through the full seven layers of the OSI model um, that's going to make me a better network engineer. I'm also really excited to learn how that correlates to multiplayer gaming and maybe even how it could connect right into Unity and uh, some, some Unity assets for multiplayer games. I don't know where it might lead, but having the certification also will allow me to get out there, do some work as a network engineer, and uh, get some side income or some full-time income from that. For, uh, so for the time being. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Gotta go past that next exam.